We're gonna do we're gonna do a talk, a presentation today on enterprise applications. So what what I'm hoping to go through. Uh, is is a little bit of a celebration. Uh, you know, I think 2011 has kind of been a big kind of red letter year. Uh, we've done uh, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion, new new regions, new services, a lot of stuff built. Eh, who cares about all that stuff? What's interesting to me is there's a whole bunch of new big enterprise customers, big enterprise customers that are deploying their applications on us today that just weren't there yet. 2011 is really a moment where that kind of folded over. Uh, this slide got a lot cooler looking that year. Uh, a lot of the services that we built, a lot of the systems from Amazon, uh, took a couple steps forward, added a couple extra features, a couple extra utilities in place to make it so that enterprise applications, and they work great. Uh, there are some differences. There are some configuration changes. There's some that aren't there yet. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is to spend time today going through how the enterprise deploys their applications, enterprise applications, securely, efficiently, quickly, now, pronto. And the whole bunch of the reason you're doing this is so you can get it done. Uh, and step by step, they do this in a very prescriptive, very uh, deliberate, very intentional way. Um, and then we'll go through an enterprise success story um, with Shaw Media. They've done, uh, they've done an amazing job uh, following some of our best practices and delivering great value on top of the platform uh, in the context of enterprise applications. Uh, and then I'll come back around and, and look at a couple of design rules, a couple of good ideas, best practices, things to take forward. Um, there are a lot of talks here today, so don't, uh, don't mistake. I'm not, I will not go through a whole bunch of shiny web apps. There isn't gonna be a bunch of talk about big data. Those are other tracks. What we're talking about today is the enterprise applications, the big ones, the ones you write the big checks for, Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, IBM, the big ones. Why, why run that stuff on Amazon? What, does that make sense? Why put that here? It's the cloud, cloud's scary, it's all new and shiny. Why would you put your enterprise, the core business, on the cloud? That seems like a real risky bet. It seems like someone's gonna get fired for taking that kind of a gutsy forward action. Uh, the reason that you do that is because uh, they work great because it's more secure in many cases. We've gone into these businesses, we do the big eight hour security deep dive. Here's the CISO, Steve Schmidt, he has a presentation later, a couple of the other guys, Bill Murray will come out, and they'll walk through the whole nine yards, and I tell you every single time, about four hours in, out come the yellow legal pads, and they're going, oh, we gotta go build that thing. Oh, we need a second biometric check, he's right. Oh man, we got, ugh, who does the destruction on our disks, oh man. So, on, on Amazon, every single instance, the tiniest M1 small, gets exactly the same treatment, has exactly the same sophisticated security and compliance and deployment controls as the giant fleets that run these enterprise applications. We, we believe that we're the clear market leader here. There isn't any question in our minds that if you build in our context and in our, form, in our footprint, you're making a choice that's got a long run in front of it. Um, we, we've sort of set the cloud API standard at this point uh, with the recent announcement around Eucalyptus and others sort of following in the fold. Uh, this is a place where you can make a bet uh, about uh, how it is that you're going to deploy, how you're going to use control tools. Uh, and we have a great track record of operational excellence. Uh, we measure our problems in seconds most of the time. Uh, we have plenty of other folks that aren't the same way. And we've been building a lot, but we know the real elephant in the room is security and compliance. We know that that's the one that you're going to keep coming back to, that your board will interrogate you about, that you will spend the eight hour meeting on. You spend five minutes telling them that Amazon's great. You're going to spend hours telling them how secure it is. So how are enterprises using the cloud as a secure extension of their data centers? That seems to be the model to us. You've got a big data center. You have a big facility. You've already made a giant investment there. You have applications running there. How do you start using the cloud? How do you start integrating there? The, the start of that is, is really understanding what cloud is what, and how it's different how it works different than usual. The big difference is a shared security model. A lot of the enterprise deployments that we've seen have been uh, operating under MSPs, operating underneath managed infrastructure. Uh, you're in charge of some more stuff maybe than you're used to. Uh, you, you, you do need to do your data encryption. That's a piece of work you've got to implement. You've got to make sure that the application's configured for that. You've got to make sure that uh, you've gone through and uh, protected your credentials just the same way as you have keys to get into your backend systems for VPN, you have keys to get into us. 
Uh, you need to secure your applications and your operating system. You need to do patches, those sorts of things. But we've done the really heavy work, the really scary stuff of our SAS 70 Type 2 audit and our ISO 27001 compliance and our FISMA moderate ATO. All, all of those security things, we've done the work and we have some of the best people in the world. I promise, guys from the FBI, guys from the CIA, guys that I am a little nervous to be around, who are super, super good at making sure that we're doing this the right way. I, I don't mess with them, they do a great job. The in between the two of us is a bunch of tools. We've put process tools in place, identity and access management, little MFA tokens so that you don't lose who's got access to what, security groups for firewalls. Those tools are all important in making sure that you have the systems and the controls in place to put protections around your enterprise apps. Most folks are doing this today in VPC. VPC is really the go forward tool, really the pattern for this, where you have logical control over the network environment. That simplifies the security topology greatly. You have ingress and egress filtration. You have that at the network stack layer as well as at the instance layer. And you're able to build VPN connections back to us. So it really can be an extension of your enterprise. That ends up looking like this. You've got your data center. You've got a gateway back from that data center into our facilities. Those facilities are built up of multiple availability zones. Our connections allow you to span those. You don't have to negotiate with two different colo providers to figure out how to get two different buildings. We do that built in. That's easy. And then from those systems, we have direct connect on top. So if you need low latency, if you need 10 gig or multiple 10 gig or dozens of 10 gig links to us, we're good with that. If you want to access down to the remainder of our services, S3, simple workflow, you can reach out of the VPC context and get into those. Over time, those services will be brought inside the VPC context. Customers, we know, want to have network control at every one of the tiers. This also allows you to connect out to your branch offices. How do you build a, a, a mesh, a network that goes from each of the different remote facilities, and then back to Amazon, and then back to the primary data center? Our VPN hardware allows you to build those kinds of networks. You can bounce off of us, go in and out of us, use us as DNS. All those different configurations are pretty straightforward put together. Autogut Desk is a great example. They, they literally think of us as their internal network. Their IP address range on us is the same as the range they use inside. We're just another data center to them. But they've been able to take advantage of some tools that have made them a lot more efficient. So enterprise apps we've seen are way more efficient when you run in this context. That can seem really weird. Wait a minute, I'm, a, I'm on cloud, I'm in virtualization. Isn't there some overhead? Isn't that weird? Uh, this is SAP. SAP uses a huge amount of infrastructure and deploys on our infrastructure constantly. We, are, we have early level certification with them. We'll be making significant presentations together with SAP at Sapphire here this year. Uh, we've started with them ages ago, 2008. They were deploying infrastructure on us. Um, they were really focused on you know, being self-service, on not having to talk to us about anything. That was confusing to them. They're like, really, it's only just an API? We're like, yes, it's really just an API. You can deal with all this stuff on your own. Uh, it's been a significant cost savings. They've got 10,000 something systems up and running at this point. Uh, it's way less from a hardware standpoint. Uh, way less time from that standpoint. They've, they've told us that it's 77% cheaper internally when they're running these kinds of test systems. They don't have to pay for them all the time. They only turn them on when they need them. Their customer workshops, their test, their dev, their demo, you guys train internal people on your Oracle systems or your SAP systems or your big database applications, your big internal apps, train them on systems that aren't there forever full time, turn them off when they go home. Huge savings for those kinds of devices. Uh, we, they build customer demos right now, it costs like $76 or it's even 76 cents. Yeah, it's 76 bucks to run this giant system for them to do a customer demo. Uh, th that kind of performance at that cost is, is unbelievable. Their, their usage as a result has gone through the roof. Each one of those little different colors is a different application. They have hundreds of different applications that sit on top of us. A bunch of their public applications, carbon impact on demand, uh, all of their demo stuff, all that runs with us. And they're continuing to certify. That, that's stuff that gets used downstream. So uh, folks like Redline Hotels, they work with us and with systems integrators like Second Watch. They built up this whole core IT infrastructure. Uh, they, they built that with us and saved 58% year over year. That's when they've been able to measure. That's, I mean, that's, a, that's massive. Most budgets are hunting down the 5% they can shave off or the 10% they can shave off. That's big a difference. Or for your backups, for your disaster recovery. We work with Store Simple. 
they, they've taken all of this upfront infrastructure that you'd have built and to, to do your DR for those big applications. You'd take and you'd have a storage server, you'd have these tape backups, you have all this sort of equipment. They throw all that stuff out. You're paying just per year for their equipment. You pay just per K per hour with us in S3. I mean, it's such a huge reduction in the cost, the total cost of ownership for this stuff. We worked together with Lionsgate. Uh, they, they had real crunch. They were in Santa Monica. They're in a data center they'd provisioned there, and they're out of space. How many of you have run out of space in one of your colos? That hurts real bad. It, they won't just kick a wall over for you. They, for some reason, they're out of racks. The powers run out. There's no more power in the area. So for Lionsgate, it was power. They were, their, their data center just wouldn't give them any more. Uh, building a whole new data center was what was on their plate. They're like, let's pour more pavement. We gotta make sure that we get the building right. They looked at, well, in the short term, let's, let's think about maybe trying a little with Amazon. So they put some SAP ERP systems on us, their SharePoint production infrastructure on us as an emergency measure. Uh, we, we've got to have machines running. Uh, it works, it works great. They've had no sorts of issues. They, they learned through a bunch of stuff, they made some configuration changes, but now they're looking at it saying, forget it, this is so much faster, it's so much easier to get it done this way. Their, their provisioning time goes from weeks to days. I mean, it's such a massive shift. Amazon did the same thing. Uh, all of our intranet, our SharePoint, I, I use it every day as we're moving documents back and forth. This PowerPoint deck was in our SharePoint five minutes ago. And that SharePoint runs on top of an AWS infrastructure. They were, they were looking at four to six weeks for procurement, racking, stacking, configuration. Frankly, that's pretty fast for average IT infrastructure shop at a big, secure, regulated environment. They do that now in minutes with us. The, the, the one that blew me out is, uh, is operational overhead. The, you have servers, how many has done a lease return on your machines? You're all done with these ones, you can send them back. Don't need those anymore. Anybody done that? Couple, two, three? It, that's time consuming too. These guys were wasting all these hours on work that's clearly not innovation. When you're the guy who's boxing up the racks and taking them back home and sending them back so you don't have to buy them at the end of the lease, I'm telling you, you are not changing the future of your business. So uh, we work together with Smarttronics and Synteractive. They built uh, the SharePoint deployments that run treasury.gov and recovery.gov. That, that's a relatively enterprise application. Uh, their internal systems uh, allowed them to uh, deploy those faster and cheaper. Uh, their government customer uh, looks at that as a 60 to 70% savings uh, in the first year. Who knows what it ends up saving them in the long term as the maintenance stuff rolls away and they don't have the same kinds of challenges. Uh, if you look at the applications, that's all Microsoft Enterprise, SharePoint, SQL servers in the back end, uh, Forefront security. Uh, they used our license mobility program to bring licensing into context so their bring, bring your own license, we'll look at what that looks like. Um, we, we, another pattern, another, another way that we're seeing this happen is we have a lot of folks that are really interested in the disaster recovery options. How, how do I make it so that when my big data center that I've spent all the real money on, when that blows up, because it's gonna fail at some point, how do I get that stuff into the cloud so that when it fails I can recover in the cloud? That sounds like a great idea. I'll give you a sneaky hint. If you like cloud and you wanna migrate there, you should do a disaster recovery project because this disaster recovery workflow, it looks a heck of a lot like a migration plan to me. Right? Oh, I, we're gonna try a failover boss. We're just gonna test it once. We'll check it out. And what? It works, and it works great, and it works smoothly, and it took 30 seconds for us to fail over the systems. Maybe we should keep them there. That's, that's an approach we've seen a lot of folks take as they go, well, we, we failed over, but we kinda don't wanna fail back. <laughs> so, in terms of configuration for cloud, um, there are a lot of knobs. There are a lot of twists and twiddles that you're gonna have to set. This is different, it's not, you don't get to sort of submit a ticket and have some guy run down the hall and install a new hard drive. Uh, it's not fast enough and it's not the way we're built. So we, we, we are gonna tell you, you've gotta go do multi-AZ. It's what you'd have done on your own, but we made it a lot easier. You will be aggregating EBS. We don't sell SANS, we don't think that's a particularly intelligent investment. That's a technology that's kinda getting funky looking. We'll make you put EBS volumes together. Stripe them for high performance, the same way that you're aggregating the spindles in the lungs of your sand. We'll have you do snapshots, we'll have you back things up. 
uh, we'll suggest that you use RDS instead of your existing relational database because we've done a lot of work to make that high scale, make that high power. Um, we'll, we'll really push hard on automation from a deployment standpoint. We'll sort of shove at you that those are good ideas, those are good plans. Um, and we'll also suggest auto scaling as a tool for auto recovery. Auto scaling doesn't just have to grow and shrink. You can set that to minimum one, maximum one, and all of a sudden if those machines go funny, they just come back to life. So we're also hearing from a lot of enterprises that they're getting value quickly from the cloud, that they have a deadline, they have a timeline, they've got to get to market. So we worked really closely with Shell. I think you've seen these guys slide up a couple times. Real big win from our perspective. Real big win from their perspective. They worked with us. Uh, how many of you use an online booking system for travel? It goes through and says, here's how I'm going to get a flight to here and there. You ever pick a flight that's like, has seven extra hops and, and goes the long way on the really cool airline with the nice people that fly it, and it's really expensive, like 7,000 bucks, and it throws a little error message that says, hold on, boss says you're not supposed to order that ticket. It's too expensive. Here are the suggested options. At Shell, when they provision infrastructure and they decide they want to use an on-prem physical server, hold on, that's not the right way to do it. The correct suggested approach is to use AWS. Why would you want to not use AWS for that? They get interrupted in deployments in their provisioning service catalog. It says, hold on, AWS is the right way to build those enterprise apps. That's the way that they're designed. So um, they have, they've taken from us huge benefits in terms of cost. They've really brought their costs down. But the big thing for them was getting to market more quickly and having a more manageable stack. We worked together with Sujeti. Uh, their Oracle implementation, all the disaster recovery for that, uh, for a big Oracle X data system, runs on Amazon Web Services. They, they, they've gotten so fast now that they actually get to practice. So the disaster recovery policy took so long to run uh, that, it, that they, they really sort of avoided the kind of cyclical tests of that. So now they're able to do much quicker disaster recovery exercises. Uh, they can do those sort of quick backups to meet the SLAs they had with the rest of the business. Um, you, know, I, you know, I think that, that quote says a lot to me that they, did, they just don't have any kind of upfront cost. The experiment has gone successfully. So Schneider Electric, another example, they, um, they've got 15 different production applications that run on top of us using VPC. Another great example, IT Lifeline and Washington Trust Bank. Uh, these guys are backing up on a daily basis 40 terabytes of content. This is the internal stuff they've got to get over the wire and into us. They use our storage gateway. They use S3 to store this content. That really makes it very straightforward to get going. And a, a critical accelerator for making this stuff move more quickly is to get licensing right. Licenses for every one of these enterprise apps is complex at a minimum. Uh, we've done a couple of things to help with a little of that. So the first of those is a release last night. This is called Agile PowerPoint, ladies and gentlemen. This slide did not exist uh, as of about 45 minutes ago. So uh, the AWS Marketplace lets you buy, find first, but buy software that runs in the cloud. So rather than download and install and call your licensing guy and make sure that it's okay and do all this sort of extra steps, you click it, you buy it, you deploy it, it runs. We already had that for some applications, OEM licensed software. So when you use Windows from us or you use SQL Server from us or uh, we have a, uh, you know, Red Hat licenses from us the same way. But this adds to that list. There are more and more partners that will add their licensing to this system. This system also supports the BYO model. So if you just want to have this manage your configuration, it works good. There are benefits for both groups. So we know that, uh, we know that they're incentivized just as much as us. We think that'll drive a lot of new enterprise software usage. So. Uh, it's hard to read that list. You have to kind of squint. But that's all the stuff from those guys that work with us. Uh, the IBM stuff's been there for years. Uh, SAP's been over a year. Oracle's been over a year. Microsoft's been years. Uh, I work with Microsoft real closely. Um, Exchange, server, SharePoint, all that stuff, it all works. Those licenses migrate. Your sales guy from these places may not agree. They may tell you all sorts of funny stuff. Uh, happy to field those questions. We have folks on staff that have already worked through how it is that you bring your own license into the cloud. We've already worked through the practice of that, so we're happy to, uh, to help you through the process of making sure that you can get the right licensing on us uh, and deliver value. Uh, like a great example, I think probably uh, most sophisticated in terms of, of a partnership just for BYL, 
uh, every one of the licenses for every one of the Oracle software applications runs on AWS. That stuff's ready to go. Uh, and it doesn't matter which of the license agreements that you have, right? So that's an important thing to bring to us in terms of a data point. What, how are you licensed today? How, how do you do that stuff? That, that all that does is shorten the cycle time, make it easier for us to get you to value. So uh, on that note and on others, I want to introduce Augusto from Shaw Media. Uh, Augusto has done some pretty interesting things. Thanks. Um, hello, uh, I'm Augusto Rosa. I work uh, for uh, Shaw Media. is a big broadcaster from Canada. Uh, we're part of a, a really big company, 15,000 employees. It was a big leap of faith when we moved into Amazon uh, when, when about a year and a half ago. So it's, uh, but I think what we did and what we delivered is a really good example. It's, it's I call it, it's really nice, funky, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, so I'm just, what I'm going to be talking about is really like who we are, uh, uh, why, what happened, why did we go to AWS, um, you know, uh, what do we deploy, the, a very standard um, enterprise application, some of the lessons learned, the, you know, we had failures, we had problems, we learned from it, um, we believe in learning, and what are future plans uh, around Amazon. Uh, Again, we are we operate about 18 TV channels. A lot of specialties in Canada, like Food Network, uh, <coughs> Mystery TV, AGTV Canada. It's really a huge. We we stream uh, about uh, pentabytes of data online. It's it's a really huge amount of uh, uh, channels. We're part of a big um, uh, telco company, ISP. Uh, phone company, we're a pretty big company. On the enterprise scale, we're all over Canada, offices pretty much almost in every province. Uh, so why did we move to Amazon? We moved to Amazon, Shaw Media itself, the broadcaster, was acquired by Shaw Communications about uh, two years ago, a uh, year and a half, two years ago, we were bankrupt. We, in fact, we had the broadcast side had gone to two, two uh, acquisitions. So technology in this array, uh, we had uh, multiple data centers, none of it redundant, uh, power failures in the middle of the night that took hours to recover from the data center from six years ago. Um, it, like being bankrupt itself, we didn't really have a lot of money to invest in capital costs. <laughs> so that, that says it. Uh, so what we when w and when we got there, uh, like we had to do something. The company uh, was a big company. We had the um, we had the table, the TV channels, uh, newspaper channels. So half of the company gets purchased by Shaw Communications was the TV channels. So our websites uh, actually hosted by the other side of the company. So. There, the pressure to move out. We had essentially, if we the, if we could move in on in in nine months, we'd save two million dollars just in hosting costs. We were paying the other company that had the, the savings. We had another uh, big objective, which was to really empower the business. We have TV channels, and we couldn't deliver websites on time. We couldn't we couldn't do anything. We couldn't do mobile applications on time. We really had to empower our uh, our business to deliver value and to make money. So, and and obviously our development team, our technology team, wanted to be agile and deploy as quick as possible. Uh, so again, we had two physical data centers uh, with uh, no redundancies. They didn't really talk to each other. Some services here, some services were there. Uh, about 36 websites, public-facing sites, multiple APIs, web services. Uh, to, to over, to actually, we, we probably have about four or five content management systems combined because as uh, technology got upgraded, there was like all these content management systems. Um, and uh, the technology is really dated. Like we had failures of power, failures of 
all sorts of things, network gear that went down, servers that went down. So it was a really tough situation, uh, to, to be honest. And uh, it, it's, we didn't really have the capital to invest on, on that. And to be honest, I, I have a lot of experience on, on this. And the last time I did a network migration of a simple uh, web, website, it usually costs a million dollars up to build a whole stack. Even counting that you actually have a data center, you would have to buy you know, your racks, your network gear, your servers, and all licenses. That's a minimum of a million dollars on the enterprise world. Uh, so from our experience, what really worked for, uh, for us was a really quick d deployment. So we, 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 what, uh, what services we're using right now, and we're constantly evalu evaluating, doing more and more, we're using EC2 with DBS volumes, because on Windows, you can't really use the non-EBS volumes. Uh, we're using Elastic Load Balancers, S3, CloudWatch. Um, so you guys know, we are a fully Microsoft.NET shop. We, we're essentially a Windows shop. We, are, we use the common enterprise uh, applications, uh, MySQL 2008, Microsoft Server 2008. So all these things that you commonly see on a, uh, an enterprise. Um, like <laughs> other things that work, we really fast deployment. Uh, the last time, when we did the first initial migration to uh, AWS, we, we, essentially, we essentially had one month to have the first public site live in production. So it was two weeks to learn how to use Amazon, deploy Active Directory, uh, configure security, all these things, and two weeks to learn the CMS. <laughs> we had a commercial purchase uh, CMS to learn. Our developers had to learn. Saying that, it was a very simple public-facing website, but still, it is an enterprise. We have to make sure it's secure. You have to make sure all these things are happening because you're going to have problems with your compliance and your security department. Uh, so it's really fast deployment, even on the Windows world where automation is a challenge. Um, so our first site went live in four to five weeks. In nine months, we deployed 36 sites. Uh, some that we get about 8 million page views a week. We get, we, we get it's, it's a, a, a huge inf uh, amount of traffic we get daily and weekly. We're very cyclical. We, get, we stream uh, a lot of video. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, a really big deal. It's very public facing as well. Uh, as a second phase, we migrated a second data center uh, where we went from Windows 2000. That, for that one, we didn't redevelop the application. That's an example of uh, for the first phase, we actually rede we, we, we redeveloped the application into a new CMS. The second phase, we actually did an imp uh, we moved the application from a very old data center was ASP applications, like really set nine years old technology. We, we essentially moved it in place. It took us two months to have, in, in, in the la and to be honest, in terms of infrastructure doing it, like you spend a lot less time making sure the infrastructure is uh, working. Uh, the last time I did a, a network migration from the same data center, but we got uh, 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 just essentially changing the physical gear. Uh, it took us th f six months of talking what we're going to do on the enterprise because there was the network group and the other group and the security. We couldn't figure out what VLANs to create. It's, it, it, it was quite amazing. It took us one month to migrate all this technology that the guy that actually designed it was no longer there. So we actually had to go through a discovery process of, okay, what services are actually there? What all this? And deploy it. So two weeks to discovery, one week to deploy everything into Amazon, one week, one month of actually testing and, uh, and some drawbacks. At one point, we deployed some application and it just didn't work. It couldn't contain the traffic. We we're going from Windows 2003 to 2008. It is really hard to 
uh, on a web, public facing website, it's kind of hard to mimic real world traffic. So sometimes even though you can stress test an application, you don't really, you cannot really stress test what the uh, uh, normal user does. So we had to roll back uh, and try again because there was some kind of bug that only existed with 2008. But still, we did it in two months. Um, so, like, back at stressing, creating a new web farm is one day to five days. After a while, we're going, it, it becomes really hard, really, really simple. You have your own way am I that you have your standard things. You, uh, is it hardened? It's to get a new web server is minutes, one hour. Then you have to have some kind of scripts to deploy. It actually makes you more efficient because the time as, a, as an infrastructure, as a, a you, you spend on, on trying to make sure the server is hardened and you, you are connected, you powered, you procure the server, you, all, that, all that stuff is gone. You save so much money. You sa like to buy a server, it, it depends on your organization. In my organization, to buy a server would take at least two to three months because you, you have to uh, get a signature from a director, a VP, and probably depends on the cost, the, the CIO, and then you have to go through all these steps until you get the server, get the license, install. All that is, is, is gone. Um, the, the, this is really one day to fully deploy a server or less. Depends how you automate. It, and things are getting better. Uh, I think the more enterprises move on to this kind of automated systems, Microsoft will be pressured to release better tools to automate things that exist on the Linux world and we can uh, do a lot more templating deployment. Um, this is essentially what we build. Uh, if you see, is really another strength around security and uh, uh, on Amazon is how easy it is to deploy a security. Oftentimes when you build a, uh, when you build a, a, an infrastructure creating your VLANs, you have two or three VLANs. In, and most people, you separate a little bit. It's so easy to secure the environment because you can start from, from the get-go on a security time frame, on a security in mind. So you have your web, web, uh, public facing, only the, the, that security group or VLAN can traffic talk from outside and you separate everything into very easy going. All this, take, you know, it took us a day to, to really do all that. And it took longer time to figure out all, all the ports were. Um, you know, I think the biggest things uh, I can say about architecting for the car, arch the lessons learned is really Make sure to you do your due diligence. Make sure you you learn what uh, Amazon and all the limitations and all the good things you have. You have to architect with a cloud in mind. Uh, it is it, like an example is use. Uh, it's something that a lot of the the other sessions uh, have been saying. Use all availability zones. Don't put all your servers on availability A. It's, it will lead to disaster. Uh, a, a big example, like when we have failures of one availability zone, you'll see a lot of a lot of places go down. All our services are spread across four data centers. Can you tell me on your in your company, do you really have four data centers in your company? Is your application spread across four data centers? Like it is it, is easy is. If you architect in that mind, is is a really high available uh, thing. Plan for failures. Be crazy about it. It will fail. Stuff fails always. Just be very detailed on it. Things will fail. Just plan for it. Back up, back up, back up. Uh, you know, on the enterprise, we use a lot of enterprise software to back up. Amazon goes a step forward. We, we, we use in normal enterprise backup software. We go further. We back up. We take AMIs of all our servers monthly. We take uh, <laughs> snapshots of all DBS volumes. We have multiple ways to recover. Uh, 
we replicate it to another uh, S3 uh, region. So it's, it's just be careful about it. Document your DR pro properly. Test it. Go through it quarterly. F fail things uh, so you know. Because things will fail on an environment so elastic. So you have to be prepared. Um, a big challenge on the, uh, because in the enterprise world we use a lot of Windows stuff. Uh, things will not work as, as uh, prescribed. Example, SQL, re SQL redundancy. You cannot use failover clustering. Uh, Active Directory, you don't have uh, a static IP, so you have to find ways around. Sometimes you have to find through automation, scripting. Sometimes you have to go back to that technology that was released 10 years ago by Microsoft. It's just what you really need. Um, multiple, uh, again, is just make sure your environment is really redundant. You don't want to get on a situation where even a data center in the cloud goes down. You have to make sure you can resist that. Uh, the other thing I can say is it really helped us engage Microsoft architects, uh, solution architects. Uh, it's the very least for us, it confirmed that we're in the right path. Um, it confirmed we're in the right path, it helped us a lot, it, it, it was a, a really good thing. Um, for us, what's the future on our, on our, on our uh, infrastructure? We, we're embarking on a second uh, data center for Amazon, like we're actually looking at DRs around that. We are looking at auto-scaling in Windows. Um, to be honest, I don't, like I've been asking this for a lot of people and not a lot of people ever auto-scale Windows. Uh, so I keep saying to my staff, when we do stuff, figure out stuff, let's blog about it because uh, when I uh, first did an Active Directory in the cloud, you can find that information. My blog post actually gets, gets uh, uh, page views until today because uh, there's no, this is how you deploy Active Directory into the cloud in a very detailed one, two, three, <laughs> do it. Um, we are going to use a lot more of S3 into, uh, for image repositories for our sites. We're actually embarking and uh, also using uh, S3 for, um, at, as a streaming and transcoding uh, services for our video. We have huge video files uh, and uh, we transcode them into multiple files to serve iPhones and to serve uh, Android, to serve the Flash players. Um, we're, we're starting to use more and more of the native um, applications uh, that uh, Amazon provides, uh, like Elastic Cache and, and uh, looking at uh, high availability um, like DynamoDB for like logging uh, and stuff. Uh, we're looking at, to be honest, when I start, that was the thing. Uh, most of you are saying it's obvious that you have to go VPDC uh, there's the for us when we started a year and a half ago that didn't wasn't that go, wasn't good enough and that's a, another thing we're looking should we migrate our public cloud into the uh, the virtual private cloud and that's that's it thank you that was awesome so I, one of the things that that Augusto said that I really liked was that they uh, they went through this sort of step by step one little part of the time that, you know, there's, you were really, really early in. You were before VPC, before we really had great documentation about Active Directory. That's a lot of pathfinding. Uh, that's why we sort of talked early on, like, some of this stuff has been figured out. It's a lot more straightforward now. There's a lot of prescriptive uh, advice on how it is that you build these things. And one, one piece of that prescription is, is sort of a migration strategy. We talked a little earlier about uh, you know, what makes sense, uh, one sort of sneaky trick is using disaster recovery, but we, we know there's a more formal process you'll probably want to go through where you're evaluating which applications uh, right off the bat, which ones, uh, you know, have the sort of minimum dependency tree, which can be severed and, and deployed on a standalone way. Uh, which, ones are, which ones are ready for migration from a, uh, from a cost standpoint, or maybe they're risky because you don't know how big they're supposed to get. So, 
You identify the ones that, that are good fits or not good fits. We have some tools that help with that, some checklists. Uh, and then you build a POC. You grab some of that application code that you're ready to move, and you try deployment. Uh, if that thing looks like it's working and, and everybody likes the performance, great, you move to the next step. You migrate some data out there, get that stuff in S3, get that ready to deploy, deploy to your applications, uh, and then you start really doing applications at a time, whole tiers, whole stack components that get moved over. Once you've done that, you'll probably come away from the process with having learned a lot of stuff. The folks that do this the first time, they write a lot of notes down. Wow, we didn't realize that it had been, we gotta make sure we share the SSH keys around, or we should figure out a way to uh, track which security groups are what, or man, we gotta start tagging our assets. That's an easy way to keep track. You take all those notes and you go back again and you do the next round. You'll take the next step. You'll move through the next set of deployments. So we, we've seen a pattern where um, you know, there are some obvious and clear fits. You know, the web application layers of your enterprise apps, some of that stuff can move. The batch processing systems, the central CMS systems that, uh, the, like, uh, uh, like what Augusto talked through. Um, there's also like digital asset management systems or video deployment systems. Some of those kinds of tools, they're a little more natural fits. They're a little easier to deploy. Maybe there are better patterns for that stuff. Um, the big, simple pieces, the SAP component, you can bring a, a, you know, like a demo of that over to show that it's possible. You know, start building the, uh, not only the technical experience, but the observation experience of being able to show your executives, being able to show the decision makers, look, man, this goes. Here I stop it, it stops going. Here I start it, it starts going again. That, that kind of flip uh, allows you to uh, get the approvals required to go do a migration, evaluate it, success, iterate, and then rinse and repeat. So uh, from a golden rules standpoint, um, we really hope that one of the things you're taking away uh, is that it really is possible to use cloud for secure, efficient, agile, repeatable deployments of these kinds of applications. Uh, that virtual private cloud plus direct connect uh, plus your wide area network connections, that really is the new LAN. That's the new network that is local to your business. The internet is the way that all of your customers are communicating with you, by, that, that all of your systems are interconnected. Use those systems in combination. Uh, we also really think it makes a lot of sense to involve those application vendors. Go grab the guys that have built the big apps and bring them to the table. We're happy to talk with them. Your solution architects, your account managers, they want to have that conversation. They're ready to do it. Uh, also, the sort of, uh, you know, making sure that you're attending to configurations for cloud uh, and understanding your licensing from either the marketplace option all the way up through bring your own license or the licenses that we sell through OEM. I, I know that's a bunch of stuff, and there's time for questions after this, but uh, I really want to say thanks and appreciate everybody taking the time.